Hello everybody! So today we're going to talk about Ribes. Ribes is the genus where we have the species for currants, all different types of currants, as well as gooseberries. And the two species that I have today are pretty rare. These are not ones that you're going to find at any supermarkets or farmers markets probably. These are things that if you want them, you're going to have to go into the woods and find them yourself. And these were sent to me by Wanderlust Nursery. So thank you so much, Wanderlust Nursery, for all the uh, incredible fruit that you've been sending me over the years. Uh, if anyone watching is interested in growing this, uh, check out the link right here on the screen or in the description below. And what's interesting about this is one of these is called the Clove Black Currant. I'm checking a list, that's why I'm looking down. And the other one is the Coast Black Gooseberry. And the one that you would expect to be the Black Currant would be the small one, right? Because currants are small. And the Gooseberry you'd expect to be this size because these ones are big and gooseberries tend to be big. Well, no, it's the other way around. Uh, these tiny ones here are the gooseberry. The large ones here are the blackberry. But the thing is, gooseberries and currants are all part of the same genus. So they come in different sizes. Some are bigger than others. And even ones that you would expect to be a gooseberry or expect to be a currant can be the other way around. So let's start with the clove black currant. They're quite big. It's the size of like a small grape. And if we cut this open on the inside, it kind of looks like a little grape also. And the species on this, by the way, is odoratum, which makes me wonder if this smells funny. So let's, uh, let's give it a smell. Yeah, kind of. Maybe like a hint of like a cheese smell to it. Hmm. All right, well, I have no idea what this is going to taste like, so let's just dive in. These taste really good. They have a, um, a nice berry flavor to them, similar to what you would get from a black currant, which is kind of hard to explain. It's a little bit like in the direction of a grape, maybe with like a hint of like a blueberry sort of flavor in there. But there's also a mellowness to it that's like a little bit like aromatic, kind of how you'd get from maybe like a vanilla. Uh, I say the sourness of these kind of ranges, it's like somewhere between like a four and a six. Some of them are a little bit more than others. So let's say five. It's about as sweet as an apple. There's a little bit of something in there, a little funkiness, it's just barely there. It's like if there's like a little hint of cream cheese in it or something. Not exactly like that, but like a little, little something in there that's like a touch of like a funk. So next we have the Coast Black Gooseberry. And what's interesting about this one is it is covered in spines. There's spines all the way down the, uh, the stick here, but also spines on the fruit. So I'm going to have to like wipe these off before I eat them so I don't get thorns in my tongue. Yeah, so the, you probably can't see it, but the little thorns, or what I call thorns, are not actually sharp. They're more like little fine uh, hairs. So I don't think that is going to be an issue eating this. And by the way, let's open this up. Inside it is full of little, little seeds. Oh! Those don't taste so great. All right, so I'm not a big fan of this raw, but I think it might be good if you cook it. Well, first of all, there's no sugar to it. There's no sweetness, maybe like a one out of 10. There is a bit of sourness, maybe like a, like a seven. Uh, the flavor is somewhere between blueberry and grapefruit but it has like that kind of harshness that grapefruit has like that sort of like bitter tannic sort of sort of taste you know i like grapefruit but i don't want to eat it raw you know i would put sugar on it or i'd cook with it i think this if you're going to use it you'd have to use it in that same sort of way uh if it's not sweet enough to eat on its own. You need to put sugar in there. Maybe take a bunch of these, muddle them up, 
and put it in a cocktail or make um, like a compote out of it. That would be the way to use it. If you were to, I would say that it'd probably be better to use that than actually the other one that I reviewed, the uh, clove black currant. Because the clove black currant is a nice taste, it tastes really good. But if you add a bunch of sugar and you cook this, it's going to reduce the flavor that you get there. Sometimes you want a berry to have a nice strong flavor, and that's where you would use that. Adding sugar to it, adding stuff to it. Um, it is a unique taste, like grapefruit is not normally what I would expect biting into uh, a small ribe species, but um, yeah, it's kind of what you get. I think it's a lot of fun to try species that are related to a more commonly available fruit. I can't grow plants where I am right now, but if I could, this is what I'd be doing. I'd be growing um, rarer species of things that I like, because you know, where else are you going to get a chance to try that? Speaking of which, uh, if you grow plants and are interested in this, check out Wanderlust Nursery. Link right here and in the description below. Uh, thank you, Wanderlust Nursery, for sending me more fascinating fruit. And um, yeah, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. I would like to give a shout out to Smarter Every Day, AltPod, and the Harbor Leaf Tea Company. They are mega patrons over on Patreon.com. If you haven't heard of it, Patreon.com is... It's how this channel happens. It's how I can afford to keep this YouTube channel going. So if you haven't checked it out, please take a moment to go into the description below and click the link there. Uh, I also have t-shirts.